He goes before you. He goes beside you. And He carries you through storms. Just be there. Be patient and be courageous because God loves you. Seek Him. Be in His holy place. Ask Him. Seek Him to be in His holy place and He will hide you in His sanctuary. you've noticed a little theme that's come through this morning already I started with Psalm 34 that I will extol the Lord at all times his praise will always be on my lips and then Daniel was encouraging us to say well let's shout out because no stone is going to take my place and then Ezra just read in one of the verses he read there in verse 6 he says at his tabernacle I will sacrifice with shouts of joy there's something in the shout isn't there You'll shout when your team's winning. You'll shout at them when your team's losing. You'll shout sometimes out, maybe shout out at God or things around when things aren't going so well. But there should always be shouts of joy. Every single day of our lives should be shouts of joy. Now I know some of you have got loud voices. True? Who said that? So we're going to shout. Is that all right? Now listen, God doesn't get nervous and you won't frighten him by lifting your voice as loud as you can. So we're going to shout his name as loud as we can. The amen stopped then. Are you ready to shout? Are you ready to shout? Because I, I believe when we shout unto God with a voice of triumph, some things break in the spiritual realms. Something happens when the shout is released. And I'm not just talking about shouting from your mouth. Shout from the very core of your being. Let the shout release from the spirit that is within you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives and dwells in you. And listen, the Holy Spirit has a loud voice. He has a gentle voice, but he's also got a loud voice. Are you ready to shout? Are you ready to shout? Are you ready to shout? Come on, stand to your feet. Are you ready to release the name of Jesus on your lips as loud as you possibly can? Are you ready? Let's go. Jesus! 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 Come on, church. Lift your voice. Shout out to God with a voice of triumph.
just tell him how beautiful he is how wonderful he is just tell him how much you love him adore him extol him in this place so here's our worship lord here's our worship lord
that you're the lover of our souls. I'm so grateful your word says, Father, that the banner you have over us is love. It's an honor and a privilege to worship you, to praise you, to love you, and to be loved by you. We're not ashamed to call you our Father. We're not ashamed to say that we love you, Jesus. Because you've done everything for us. Continue every day to bless us and to love us. I am my beloved's, and he is mine. And his banner over me is not one of judgment, it's not one of finding my faults. It's not one of pointing the finger. It's not one of, Phil, you should have done this, you shouldn't have done that. The banner over me, the banner over you, is love in perfection. sense of God's presence in here is lovely. Can you fire the announcements? It should be there, Thomas. Oh, you've got it. All right, brilliant. Thank you so much. Let me go through this uh, really quickly. Um, we were supposed to start our new Bible series this last Wednesday, but obviously we couldn't because I wasn't here. Um, so we will be starting at this Wednesday evening. Um, so half past seven, we'll start, we'll have some worship, Bible study, and some prayer together, and uh, start a new series of walking into our promised land, and walking into the things that God has promised us, and things that God has for us, but along that journey, there are certain challenges, and certain things that come before us, and so we need to be aware of those, and so we'll cover those things um, on Wednesday evening. Um, uh, things to put in your diary, it's on the notice board, obviously we've got Dr. John Andrews with us this morning. Um, in March, we have, uh, sorry, February, we've got Paul Hudson, and then in March, we've got Chris Cartwright, and then Patrick Egan, again in March. Um, 24th, uh, if you weren't here last week, uh, I'm looking around to see if Pauling's not here this morning, she was going to try and make it. Um, 24th, uh, we have a celebration of life of Peter Smales, and I know it's a work day, but if you can um, uh, make it um, and just come along and celebrate his life. There will be a burial before, but that will be family only. And then we'll have a celebration here uh, from half past two. And uh, we've got the order service and all those things are now kind of done, uh, working through with um, his daughters. And uh, so we want to celebrate the life of a very faithful man and take time to celebrate and the impact. I only got to know him for, I guess, four years that we've been here, but half of that was lockdown and uh, the impact and his ministry and his life. And so we want to take time to celebrate it. Continue to please to pray for Pauling and the family and obviously a very difficult time at this, this time. Um, if you can, just message Pauling, give her a call, drop in and see her. I know she'll love to see her. She is back. She's back home now. Um, so if you can do that, you guys have known her for quite a long time. She would really, really um, appreciate um, that. Um, back again in um, the 25th of March, uh, we have um, Go Gently Tour. So Patrick Egan, uh, as you know, is the founder of uh, Kintsugi Hope, the well-being course that we run here. And um, he is interviewing Terry Waite. If you don't know who Terry Waite is, Google him. And um, he, um, an older gentleman, he must be in his 80s now, I would, I, I would say. He must be that sort of age. 
um, but he was um, in prison uh, for his faith and things. And so he's come along and he's been interviewed on this particular day. You need the book in online. I've sent the stuff through um, Facebook and things. Have a look. You've got to click on there and book in and it's five pound for the day um, to book in. So we know uh, how many people um, just to, um, to work those figures through. So if you can help us by doing that, then Patrick is going to stay over on the Saturday night and going to speak at the church on the Sunday. Um, all this stuff, um, I put some on this morning, but I had to very quickly nip over to Northern Ireland, so I, I missed a few of the things. So I will get some of those things on the notice board for next week. I think that's everything. One other announcement, you and where's Isra? Come and give that announcement. Hello, come on, Ezra. Um, next Sunday after the service, um, Ezra and I are... Um, Ezra and I are running some training upstairs for the children and the youth team together. Um, it's something we are very, very excited about going into 2023 as we move forward together. Um, we spent a lot of time praying into this, haven't we? Um, if you would like to join the kids team or the youth team, um, please feel free to come and join the meeting next week or speak to one of us, um, and we'll be more than happy to see you there. Thank you. Be there or be square. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, We'll be, we'll be going over topics like our, the vision, um, unpack the vision for the next half a year to a year. Um, it's my first time doing a meeting like this, so I'm quite nervous myself. But um, yeah, so we'll be unpacking the vision, we'll be unpacking the topics that we're doing, we'll be unpacking having a heart for the youth ministry and stuff like that and going through all that sort of stuff. So please be there, be encouraged. Um, us, we ask you to pray for us as well, all the, all the leaders in the, in the group. Because it is hard working with kids. It can be loud. It can be, <laughs> it can be tough. But God is so good. We serve a great God. And he is so great that he's given us a passion for the young people and the children. So we just ask for you to pray into that. Pray for the young people as well. Pray for the children. It'll be a great time. Yeah, there we go. That's great. We have a load of kids and young people in this house. We're so grateful. And uh, we just want to give them our very best. And so we're ongoing training and child protection training, lots of stuff that we're putting in place. So please do, people who are part of that, uh, please make every effort, put that in your diaries. Um, please be part of it. Okay, we're just going to release our 412 kids. Um, have a great time upstairs. All three of them. Four, five. It's my privilege and honor to, in, um, to have Dr. John Andrews uh, with us this morning. Um, John and I have been friends for 40 odd years now, isn't it? And um, I know he, John's been with us a couple of times, but some of you maybe haven't been here when John has ministered. Um, when, when John was at Bible college between years two and three, he did his pastorate with my dad back in Belfast. And um, I, I was only about 16, was I? Something like that. And I got to know John from then. And, uh, and so we've stayed friends all the way uh, through and the various churches I've been in, you've always come and ministered uh, with us. He's an author, he's a teacher, he's a leader, he's been principal of Bible college, all sorts of stuff. So he knows lots and lots of things and uh, over the years he's certainly been a mentor to me and um, so it's a really privilege and an honor to have him with us. So can we invite please and can we just uh, give a warm welcome please from City Church. <laughs> So let me just pray. Father, thank you for John, his ministry, his heart, his gifting. And uh, Father, we're so grateful and privileged this morning that he's with us. And Father, we know what he's going to share this morning is from you. And uh, so Father, we pray as listeners, Father, we won't just hearers, but be doers of what he shares this morning in this place in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Hey, it's great to see you. Last time I was here, we all had our masks on. Remember that? Wow, it's nice to see your faces, and uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful privilege to be here. So thank you so much for having me back, which is, is great, and it is a real joy to be able to share with you. Now, just remind me, what time we finish at? Uh, okay, I know people say that, but roughly just an idea. Okay, that's great. Yeah, and the clock's round there, so I have to look round for that. So. Okay, so it's a, it's a real joy to be with you. Thank you for having me, and uh, thank you to the team for leading us in worship and to be able to spend uh, so much time together. And uh, I wish you a happy new year, of course. I know we're a little bit into it by now, but happy 2023. And may this be a year when the Lord really leads us and does something amazing in us and through us. Amen. We don't just want him to do something for us, 
but we want him to do something through us as well. And it's with that sort of idea in mind, I feel like I've got a word on my heart for you that I want to share. So if you've got a Bible and you would like to follow a reading with me, I'm going to read from Luke's gospel, uh, the gospel of Luke chapter 5. So if you're still getting to know the Bible, it's like you started that New Testament bit and it's Matthew, Mark, and then Luke. And I'm going to read from Luke chapter 5, just a beautiful, beautiful story of Jesus and engaging with some of his young disciples. So it's Luke chapter 5. I'll read from verse 1 and we'll read down to around about verse 11. So just a short reading. If you haven't got a Bible, you're a guest with us. You can just listen to what I share Uh, with you. And it says this, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, or we might say the Sea of Galilee, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men or catch people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. Wow, amazing story. Now, I don't know about you, but When I read these wonderful miracle stories of Jesus, the natural temptation, the natural draw is to look at the miracle, to look at what Jesus has actually accomplished and actually done. And that's a very natural thing to do and a very normal thing that we actually see the amazing miracle of Jesus in this incredible catch of fish that these uh, young fishermen go from having no fish to two boatloads of fish so full that the the threatening that the boats will sink. And Peter's boat, research shows us that Peter's boat was probably around about 27 feet in length. It could take five crew members. It's that sort of size. So, So both boats are now filled with this incredible catch of fish. And it's dead easy for our eyes just to focus on that amazing miracle. Wouldn't it be great to have two boats Full of fish. Well, of course it would, especially if you're a fisherman. That would be fantastic. But one of the things that sometimes happens is we miss the little human moments in the story that are crucial for the miracle to happen. So when we see this great catch of fish, while look what Jesus did, and rightly so, and we rejoice, look what Jesus did, and we say, Amen, Lord, please do it again in one way or another in our lives, sometimes we so focus on what he did that we can miss the human element to the story. Yes, absolutely, at the heart of this little story that I've read to you, there is a dynamic, profound, supernatural moment. No question, right? No question about it. This is a supernatural intervention by Jesus to really bless these young men. But along with the supernatural, there's a whole bunch of natural things that help the supernatural to happen. And I would argue, and I need to be really careful here, I don't want to offend anybody, I would argue 
that in this story, the supernatural won't happen without the natural. And I want us to think about this idea, and I want, I want to bring both an encouragement to you and maybe, maybe a little bit of a challenge as well as we're moving into 2023, as you're moving into the, the idea of possessing your land, that as much as we are reliant on God to do the supernatural, the bit that only God can do, the bit that only the Holy Spirit can do, the bit that only Jesus can do, there's a whole bunch of stuff that only He can do. And, we, and that's absolutely true, isn't it? Only he can do certain things. Yet we understand that there's, a, there's also a sense in which in the midst of doing the supernatural, he will call certain things from us in the natural. Now, not always, not always. Sometimes God will just do stuff because God's God. But there will be many moments, and we can even see it in the life of Jesus. We can see it in the Gospels where he does amazing stuff in partnership with human agency. He does the supernatural in partnership with natural. Amen? And and you know this. If you've hung around the Gospels of Jesus for any length of time, you've come across this before. You know, that that great celebration of the feeding of the 5,000. Well, that's an amazing miracle, but it only happened because a boy gave his packed lunch. Right? Now, Jesus could have, could have, done a miracle with the rocks and the sand, but actually he uses the packed lunch to do this amazing miracle. It, that, when, that when Peter and Jesus have the miracle of the, the, the fish, the, 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 the temple tax in the mouth of the fish so that they can pay their tax, that happens because Peter caught the fish, right? When Jesus heals the paralytic, the man who is carried by his four friends to the house, He's able to heal that man because his four friends carried into the house, right? So we absolutely believe, a church like this, we believe that God can do the supernatural. And we would believe that the stuff we read in the Bible and the stories of Jesus and in the book of Acts are still relevant for today. We believe that that stuff can still happen today. Amen? We want to believe that. We need to believe that. Our world needs a church that still believes in the supernatural and still believes in a God who can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine. So we want to hold on to that. We want to lean into that. We want to believe for that. Holy Spirit, we need you. Holy Spirit, we want you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. And we want to be a community that expects the supernatural of God. But along with that, we're being called into a partnership with the Lord. 